Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Uh, in this Grasshopper WASP tutorial, I'm going to explain how we can make a series of hexagons and distribute them randomly uh, using the stochastic aggregation. Uh, as you can see here, I can produce different uh, random results. Uh, I can increase or decrease the number of count uh, for the aggregation. Uh, we are also going to talk about how we can extract the edges because the WASP plugin usually gives you a mesh and for each of the projects you have to have some creative process to extract the edges. So we're also going to talk about that and produce these random results uh, in Grasshopper using the WASP plugin. Uh, okay, let's get started from scratch and learn this step by step. Uh, okay, from the previous tutorial we talked about uh, how we can use the WASP plugin. Let me just open the uh, components we're going to use. Uh, we talked about using the aggregation uh, stochastic aggregation we have to define a part which we use the uh, vast basic part uh, slider for the count and also a reset button so we can reset everything so be sure to watch that video uh, which is the first lesson uh, for this part what I want to explain is we want to go further instead of just simply using a curve we're going to go to a B rep uh, so assume that we have a curve here which was a hexagon uh, for this example file what I have used in Rhino is I've produced a polygon center number six zero and enter because I wanted to make it at the center and use the shift key if you want to just make that in a direction and then I have imported that into grasshopper uh, that's it uh, the next step is to make this into a solid. Before we go uh, forward, we have talked about uh, the connection, VASP basic part connection. Uh, for the VASP basic part, remember that we have uh, the name, the geometry, and the connection. Uh, okay, for the connection, we use the elements of VASP uh, uh, connection from plane because it was easy to understand. So for now, what we want to do is to work around with this solid to make a new series of planes. Uh, from the params menu, let's just make this fit the screen. Uh, from the params menu, I'm going to go to the geometry uh, surface and convert that into a surface. And also I'm going to go to the surface a free form and extrude it a little bit up so let's just use this extrude or you can just simply search for EXTR and let's go to the full name so you can see what I'm doing okay uh, when I give the surface to the base there is a direction obviously we have to give this a Z direction uh, for this project because uh, we want to let me explain it here in Rhino for example uh, because we want to uh, make this plane for example go to this plane and also after moving we want to rotate it around so for example it's going to be like this I hope you understand what I'm saying so this cell is in this direction and this one is in the Z direction and we want to aggregate that randomly to do that the uh, the most important part is that we should have square bases okay uh, because uh, when you have a square base you can rotate it but when you have a rectangle you can't so uh, it's really easy to do that what you have to do is to extrude uh, the hexagon uh, as the same as the length of this edge to do that we can go to the curve and use explode explode the hexagon and I'm going to just pick up one of the segments set list item to select something which is going to be one of the edges and then you can go to the params menu and connect a number to that and it's going to give you the length uh, there is also another tool in the curve uh, component which is length so remember that this is uh, the same technique okay uh, after that we can give that to the Z and now we have a hexagon a solid hexagon which is completely square at its sides okay so that is the most important part for this lesson uh, for the geometry we're going to use this one as the geometry remember that we had to give that to the geometry and now we have to make a new series of uh, planes for the planes I'm going to go to the surface and deconstruct the b-rep it's going to give you eight faces we just have to pick three faces that are not adjacent so I'm going to go to the surface 
uh, and make an area for the faces and from the display menu I'm going to just see uh, what are the numbers so I'm going to connect a point list to the centroids and bake it uh, I've used these steps to find the numbers out so whatever you want to choose for example we can say uh, 1 uh, 5 and 3 okay or 1 3 5 uh, these are the faces we need so we can just select them by going to the set list item face the user panel remember that when you have multiple numbers in a panel you have to say multi-line data and I'm going to say 1 3 and 5 when you click multi-line data you see these a grouping thing so remember that you have to see that as a result okay uh, now that I have selected the faces you can see that we have these three not adjacent face for the plane and uh, now that we have that there are several ways that you can uh, extract a plane from these faces what I think is the easiest way to do is to go to the surface and use this evaluate surface because these are a nerve surface reparameterize it because uh, when you reparameterize it's going to be from 0 to 1 and also 0 to 1 and to make this at the center uh, I'm going to give this a UV coordinate which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 obviously we don't have any Z so it's at the center uh, you can just use a panel again because it's just one uh, data we don't need a multi-line data but anyway it's a good uh, practice to always do that and then we say 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 then give that to the point and now you can see those planes appearing uh, here I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so maybe 30 you can see these planes here okay uh, after uh, having the planes we can uh, give these frames uh, to the plane but the problem here is that because we want to put for example the this plane to this plane uh, we also want to flip the direction directions uh, I mean uh, as you can see here this is X and Y for this plane it's also X and Y but to make that a rotation uh, we can simply just rotate these planes okay uh, so what I want to do here is this is the frame output which is the plane from the params menu I'm going to connect a plane so you can see this is a plane uh, okay to rotate the plane you can go to the vector uh, plane and we have this rotate plane or you can just search for rotate plane and find it here uh, this is the plane we want to rotate remember that this tool is going to help you to uh, rotate the plane around the z-axis which is exactly what we want uh, right click it and make it a degrees and now we can just rotate that around the z-axis whatever we want because it's three plane uh, we can go to the params menu and use this gene pool that's a, a simple uh, multiple container for number sliders so I can just double click this and make it three uh, and assume we want to make it from 180 degrees or maybe minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees okay and you can just put that to zero decimals because I, uh, we don't need that much of the details uh, okay uh, after that we can just give that to the plane turn off the plane here turn off the plane here and as you can see here this is rotating the first one the second one and the third one okay so now we have this rotation and now we can uh, simply give this to the plane VASP connection from plane okay so I think that is uh, a good way of working with the planes uh, I'm also want to give you another technique if you want to work with the plane so this is just a rotation technique uh, another way is to work with the flips so you can go to the vector plane and use this flip plane and give those planes to the input if it's like three plane we just have to go to the set and use list item and zoom in to make these three planes output here and you can just uh, completely control each of these planes uh, by uh, flipping the x or the y direction so uh, there is a reverse x reverse y and swap x y uh, you can use a toggle boolean toggle 
and this is going to be x this is going to be y and this is going to be a swap between x and y okay you can give this to the reverse whatever you put to true it's going to reverse it you can see that if i uh, f uh, change the axis you can just change those axes flip the direction for x and y that is also another method you can do so i'm going to just bring that and use this for the second plane and use this for the third plane and again uh, put them all in one plane because the first is here this is going to be the first the second use the shift key use the shift key to put that to the third okay so now we just have simply uh, produced two techniques we can also use this as the plane for output here uh, okay mm, let me just turn on this part geometry out and that's the shaded mode and now you can see that playing with these flipping things remember that you have to reset the button and change the count if the rule is making it just like a uh, recursive it's going to give you an error so remember that to have to play with this true falses to get different outputs this is also cool you can make this pattern uh, maybe put this to true flip the x direction flip the y direction from this one and make this pattern okay so remember that you can play around with this one or if you want to rotate the planes and put this to minus 1990 and this one to maybe zero uh, remember that we had this connection rule zero one two goes to one two zero okay and now you can see these random patterns emerging and if I bake that uh, I can have these meshes output here okay if we don't give this 90 degrees obviously they are not going to overlap so check that out you can see that they are not completely sitting on each other because we have rotated that more or less than 90 degrees and that's it so you can always play around but I think minus 1990 in this one is going to be the simple method you can use here and if I put this to minus 90 that is going to uh, maybe this one to zero is going to give you that 3d output okay I think that's the fastest way you can do that and you can just simply change the output okay at the end as you can see here we can have a series of meshes okay because the vast plugin gives you a series of meshes uh, the problem is how can we find the edges if you go to the mesh and select this mesh edges give it to here uh, obviously there is only going to be interior edges that's the problem it's all going to be inside that mesh and we can't find that uh, another method is to go to the mesh and use uh, maybe face boundaries again you can see that it's going to give you the boundaries inside so it's going to be something like this which is obviously not that good uh, what you can do here is to use this face boundaries and then convert that into a surface uh, it's going to just convert that into a surface then just go to the surface and join them together brep join and as you can see here it's going to give you a single B rep okay uh, because we don't want to have all of these edges here uh, you can simply go to the surface utility and use this merge faces and you will have those easily in grasshopper okay so to get that and convert that into a b-rep remember that you can 
just join, uh, make the face boundaries into a surface, join them together and just merge, merge those faces. Now you have it, the solids uh, for them, uh, after the merge face, you can just simply get a B-Rep edge if you want to see the edges and you have also the B-Rep. So this is also a great tool if you want to just work around and we can give that a color, for example, from the custom preview. And we can see the results. Okay, just turn off everything. We don't need that extrusion. And now we can play from the numbers here. Reset that. And just do this. pattern like this. Uh, I hope this tutorial was useful. Remember that you can always uh, switch between these two methods. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask below this lesson. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Remember that you can download these uh, example files all from our website, parametrichouse.com. And remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with your friends. And let me know in the comments uh, if any additional uh, examples you need so we can record the tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.